Hey everybody, welcome back for part two of the Farmall M carburetor rebuild series. I'll show you what we've got going on today. I decided to let the float bowl soak in some good fresh evapo rust at least all day today because there's so much going on for rust in all those passages. I won't be able to get to everything with the sandblaster. So while that is taking its bath, the throttle body portion is not nearly as bad. Uh, it still has some issues. We've got some pretty heavy rust inside of the fuel inlet, which I doubt you can really see, but um, it's still not as bad as the bottom portion. So I think I'm gonna take this right out to the blasting cabinet. We'll get this one cleaned up. We'll work on getting all the passages uh, verified as being free of debris and open, and then we will start the reassembly, at least on this part. So that's the plan for today. So here's where we're at. Throttle body piece cleaned up very well. I had to work especially hard inside that fuel inlet. And then of course, all the passages to bring it all over to where the inlet needle seat is. We made sure all of these holes, all these passages up, down, around, through, even that very thin little slot that's right up in there. You see that? That's a, still a very critical piece, everything completely open, completely clean, nothing left in it for rust, corrosion, debris. Threw a little bit of the Frank's Red Hot into that little um, pivot pocket for the throttle linkage so that the comments section stays happy with me. And we, uh, we lapped the gasket surface here for the bowl down to make sure we were good and flat because typically it's the top cover piece that will warp around these uh, bolt holes because that's where all the, the tension is and that's pretty thin up there. So we have our foundation to begin building from. The Venturi cleaned up very well, so that's ready to go back in. We've got all the new pieces from the kit laid out here and um, a couple of substitutions. So first, the float. I mentioned last time that that's completely written off. So I had this other carburetor here from a Farmall 300. And this is where, guys, I know I harp on buying books all the time, have the parts manuals for what you're working on and sometimes what you're not, <laughs> they can let you know what parts are shared in common. And fortunately, the float was the same for the 300 carburetor as the Farm All M. This tested good, cleaned it up, so we're ready to go here, as well as the float pivot bracket, the one out of the M carburetor, got pretty rusty, pretty pitted verified that this was also the same piece as well. So that came from the 300 carburetor. So that means we've got enough stuff here to start the reassembly process. So let's get after it. Okay, first pieces to go in are the new throttle shaft bushings. These came in the kit. So you've got two of them. One bushing has no holes drilled through it. That one goes back here. The other bushing has come on man, has two holes drilled into it. You can see one right there, one right there. And also those holes are a little bit closer to this end of it than they are this end. So the end that they are closest to goes in first, all right? And these two holes have to do with that economizer slot that I talked about last time that is cut into the throttle shaft right here. And these holes in this bushing also have to be lined up perfectly with the two holes that are D 
deep inside of the bore in there. And here's a still picture so that you can see them a lot better. And when you put this bushing in, you have to line those up just right because this relies on air that passes through those two bushing holes and through this economizer slot in the throttle shaft. And that comes into play at low idle. If you don't have these bushing holes lined up with the passages that are in the throttle body, you're not gonna have that airflow circuit opened up and everything is positioned so that that economizer slot in the throttle shaft is open to both of those holes in the bushing no matter where the throttle plate happens to be. One way that I verify the hole alignment is take a small bent piece of wire like this that's about the size of the holes in the bushings, make sure it can drop down into the hole and go all the way through, hitting the passage that's on the back side. Again, with the GoPro, you're probably not gonna get a great view of this, but I have good pass through on both of those passages. So we know that bushing is in properly. The other one can go in however you like. Now we check the throttle shaft for free movement, just to make sure bushings did not collapse in. I don't think these did because they drove in very well, so looks good. Yep, so we can make it permanent by installing the Welsh plug included in the kit onto the back side of this rear bushing back here. You just want to pop the domed portion of it down just a little bit, and that actually expands that plug out, tightens it right up in the hole. Looks good. Now the throttle shaft can go in for good. So we've got the little stop pin up there. You need to make sure the quadrant goes to that side of the pin. And we can align the slot for the new throttle plate. And the one in the kit does not have a number 12 on it like the factory original does. But if you look at the edge profile of it, you can tell which way it has to go in. So we'll drop the new plate down into the slot that's in the throttle shaft. Keep these small picks on hand for lining these up. There we are. Got the screw holes very close. With the screws tight, check for free movement. We are good. I want to call your attention to that idle slot. You can see it, it's just barely visible above the throttle plate down there. The book spec is to have 25 to 31 thousandths worth of that slot sticking up above the throttle plate when it's absolutely closed and no throttle stop screw pressing on it. And for this setup right here, we are good. So we might as well install said throttle stop screw. We got a new one with the kit, new spring. Goes in right here. I'll run it in just until it moves the throttle plate. Good enough for now. Next. We can install that new drilling plug. Again, new one included in the kit. And I always put a little bit of thread sealer on these just to be sure. They would probably be okay without it, but I prefer it.
It is time now for the idle adjusting jet, new jet, new spring in the kit, and this was the one that was stuck so tight when we took it apart. We've got it all cleaned up, so threads are a lot better now. We can get it in by hand until, yep, it starts applying pressure against the spring. Spring works pretty well for keeping that from turning. All right. Inlet needle seat. We've got the gasket under it. So we'll put that in. Give it a decent cinch. Needle can go in. There we are. And now the float pivot bracket, the new one that we sourced, or the replacement one, I should say, we sourced from that Farmall 300 carburetor. And the two very small screws hold that on. All right, good and solid. So now we can throw the float on. The new float axle comes in the kit and the bracket has the slit in this leg here. This one does not have it. Uh, that's meant to be like a friction fit deal. So when we throw the float on, we will put the axle in from this side. And then before it goes through the hole in the top of this leg, we're gonna have to throw a small screwdriver in that slot, wedge it sideways and just give it kind of a little bit of a, a spread. And then we can guide that axle through and that's gonna keep that axle from migrating out in operation, so. Make sure we got our float on the right way. Feed the axle in through. Okay, just until it starts. Spread that leg a little bit. There we are. That keeps it nice and solid. Now for float measurements. Just looking at it, it looks really good. Typically when the float looks like it's flat level with the bowl, you're usually pretty close to being on, but they want you to have one and five sixteenths inches from the top of the uh, gasket surface here to the highest point at the float. We're looking really good right there. They also have a drop spec for it, and that's where this little center tang back here comes into play. Um, when the float drops, this will pivot around and hit the inlet needle seat, and it will stop the float from going too far. So. We'll flip it upside down. We'll let that float drop, all right? And they want one and 15 sixteenths inches from the gasket surface to the lowest part of the float. And we are good on both counts. So if any of those needed uh, to be changed for the, um, for the at rest position, we'd have to bend the bracket back here. Do not try to bend the floats themselves. Bend the bracket in this area for that. And then if our drop was not correct, you would bend this little center tang back here until you achieved proper travel. In our case, everything's good. So the final piece that goes back into our throttle body assembly is the Venturi. And after all the trouble we had taking that out of there, when you get them properly cleaned up, they just drop right in and they just slide right back out. <laughs> so, all right, I think it looks good so far. Excellent start. We've got the float bowl still soaking. It's starting to turn that evapor rust a uh, darker color. So that means it's working on it. We're gonna let it sit in here the rest of today. All of tonight and tomorrow, we will Da, 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 da. We will begin attacking that. I just have to mess it up right toward the end. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you all are enjoying the uh, process. I think we've got some pretty good prospects for the carburetor. The top half turned out pretty good. Hopefully the bottom half will as well. We'll see tomorrow. Hope to catch you all back then.